Hi and welcome to the seventh video about our DevSecOps GitLab pipeline which we are building. In this video we will have a look at secret detection. Romano, are we adding the secret detection step in the same place in the pipeline as we did at the other tools? Yes, exactly. We have our DevSecOps pipeline, which you can see up here. And as you can see, we will add secret detection in the same place as we added the other tools before. A quick recap. In our previous videos, we added first software composition analysis. And you see the video up there. We added license compliance with that video up there. And we also added static application security testing with this video up there. And in our last video, we had a look at how to do container scanning with this video up there. And now, Paddy, how are we doing secret detection with GitLab? So what's secret detection at all? Secret detection is about finding secrets in your own code or configuration file. Now, what are secrets? Secrets can be passwords, can be keys, can be other tokens that are, you consider as secret or confidential. And this is how it works. Secret detection scans all your source code files and configuration files that you committed to the Git repository. Within these files, it looks for passwords and other secrets like keys, for example. If it finds anything in there, it gives you a chance to replace them. And replacing means you have to change them. In other words, a secret that was detected by secret detection is considered compromised. It needs to be changed within all systems. The secret detection implementation is based on GitLeaks open source project. But Paddy, where do I store my secrets if I cannot store them in the source code? Well, yes, you shouldn't store them in source code. And the right place to store them is in an external system like, for example, a vault. GitLab currently supports HashiCrop Vault as this solution. As of now, GitLab has no integrated way of storing secrets. That's cool, Paddy. Let me guess. Integrating secret detection is just adding one line of code. So true, Romano. Enabling secret detection is just adding one line of code. And this is this line of code. To the GitLab pipeline file, we just add another template called secretdetection.gitlab-ci.yaml. Let's enable secret detection together within GitLab now. So now let's add this line of code to our GitLab pipeline. I again open it in the web editor. and then we commit everything. In the background, GitLab now again started our pipeline. So let's see what the results are. So as we can see, Pipeline still run through, everything is green. And we do have our secret detection step here running. Let's see what this job did for us. It tells us it did run the GitLab Git leaks tool and it did not find any leaks. But Paddy, 
In our previous video, we added quite a lot of leaks. How can it be that no leaks are found? Very well observed, Romano. We should have found some leaks here. Let's see what we added before. In the previous session, we've added code in the controller, like this. And if you look closely at lines 19 and 20, we, for example, have hard-coded passwords in there. We'd expect that it finds these. So what happened here? It turns out that the secret detection tool is pattern-based. And the pattern they defined for passwords actually misses these examples on line 19 and 20. But Paddy, how does the pattern matching work? Let's see. The patterns are defined in a file called gitleaks.tom. Searching for password, we will eventually find the generic API key here. But Paddy, look, password is defined in the regex. Why did secret detection not find the password? Well, that's due to the pattern that's defined in here. It's very specific and it includes, for example, only lowercase letters. Whether this is a bug or on purpose, I can't say, but for sure it's not helpful to actually detect normal passwords as we have them in code. So, but Paddy, um, now we have lost. Um, the password was not found. Um, so, what should we do now? In the last session, we introduced SUST, Static Application Security Testing. And lucky for us, that tool actually finds these instances of vulnerabilities. Let's see. I head back to our project, go to security and compliance to the vulnerability report, then select only findings of the SAST tool. Now let's see where we have the instance we are looking for. I guess it should be that one. Sure enough, it found for us this vulnerability. So we are covered in this case by another tool, not the secret detection tool. But why should an EI use uh, the secret detection? This is completely useless. Then I can just use SUST. I'd not say it's useless. If we take a look again at the list of patterns it finds, we see it's quite a big list. And it includes specific patterns, for example, for the AWS keys, as here, for example. So let me create a key that's found by the secret detection tool. I head back to the controller and open it in the web editor. And I edit and add these two lines that actually match a cloud key. Let's commit and see what the pipeline does. 
I now go to the pipeline again. and see what it tells us. I open the secret detection job result. And sure enough, we have our finding here. Okay, uh, I can see that uh, we have a leak found, but well, where can I see the leak, what it really is? Well, there are many ways where you can see them. First of all, let's go back to the pipeline. Here we have the security tab. And if I open that and I sort and filter by secret detection, Then we actually see that we have our vulnerability found here. So it found a AWS to access token, which should be revoked now. The other place to see this is in the security and compliance section in the area of vulnerability report, where we can also filter by tool for secret detection. Sure enough, our finding is here. I open the finding to see what it tells us. And yes, on line 22, it shows us that it found this access key. Okay, um, that's good that it found the ID for cloud, but is this the real vulnerability and why do we didn't found the value for the cloud? Well observed, Romano. Actually, it just can find something that has a defined pattern. And pattern in this case means the ID of the AWS access token. That one has a well-defined structure. The value on the other side is random, so we can't define a pattern for that. And what the tool now does is the following. It looks for the well-defined pattern of the ID and makes us aware that potentially we have a vulnerability, meaning a key also or a value also defined in there. This also means that it will show this as a vulnerability when you, for example, get the value from a vault, so in a secure way. So therefore, this whole um, procedure will also generate a lot of false positives. That's to be expected, yes. So it will require you to analyze and to mark these as false positives and in a later session we will see how we can actually manage these vulnerabilities. So in this session we added secret detection to our project. We, by just adding one line of code in our GitLab CI YAML file we were able to enable secret detection. We also saw that the secret detection works with a lot of pattern matching and regex expressions. And that can also cause a lot of false positives. And with that, we are at the end of this video. In our next video, we will look at DUST, which is Dynamic Application Security Testing.